Alrighty, today we are looking at the Maurizio Uber Bases base, this little miezo. Um, it does have some special strings that make it a bit lower, like a normal bass. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and lay it down and we'll take a look at it. Alrighty, so it's all laying down. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit to some of the more special characteristics. It's basically a normal bass. Um, and it has volume, tone, here's a veritone, which is, uh, it's kind of like having six different pickups. And then here's the auxiliary in volume, um, auxiliary in, or sorry, auxiliary in headphone amp. Turns on and off for the headphone amp over here, just like that, real nice and pretty, works great. Um, and then the output jack. So the output jack works whether or not the headphone amp is on, so it just sort of works all the time. And then all the tuners and the bridge. And then this is just a little magnet for my Soundbrenner watch to be able to attach to. Um, after that, obviously there's a single single Bartolini pup. But then right down in here, at the base of the strings, there's actually these little lumps. So, see that? So there's an extra coil starting right about there. And then it gets a little smaller right about there. And it gets much smaller than the original string until it goes over the saddle. Then it even gets bigger again for a second, just to help make sure it stays on the ball. And then that's almost true for all the other strings. So we have a lump starting there, gets smaller there, gets a little thicker at the end. So these lumps in the middle that are right here, all of these little lumps that are right there, make sure that the harmonics are more in tune because um, normally on a bass the harmonics go sharp as you go up the fingerboard um, so even if you're so if your twelfth is perfectly in tune um, your ninth will be slightly sharper than what it should be your seventh will be slightly sharper than that your fifth will be slightly sharper than that third four or sorry fourth third you know that little one slightly higher than the third they just keep going sharper and sharper and sharper when you add the lumps at, down at the bottom all of those harmonics are actually more in tune, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing is that you'll notice in the strings there's a little bit of like gapping on these like larger ones. And that's the core right down there, right underneath them that you can see. Um, so that's pretty interesting. That's just to make sure they get thin enough to get through the holes. Um, and you'll notice too that the break angle changes um, across each of these. And so I actually put some rubber in here. Um, the string manufacturer recommended that I put a little bit of rubber in here. And when we look from the side, you can see that the break angle on these strings is pretty intense, um, but then it gets a little bit less intense for that last E string. So that's a handy dandy little, little trick that really helped out a lot to make the first fret a lot more playable. Um, a little less bend in the system. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot about some stuff with the bridge. Um, it's super, super adjustable. It's not just the front that comes up, but the back actually comes up as well. And then this is a locking screw for locking, you know, whether or not it goes forward and back. And then these individual saddle pieces can actually scooch left or right. And you'll see on each one of these that they are scooted just a tiny bit. Uh, just to try to bring the whole base a little closer together, all the strings a little closer together. They're about 16 millimeters, 16 and a half millimeters um, between, the, between the strings. So obviously it gets a little smaller as we get up to the high end just because the strings are really thick. But center to center is about 16 and a half millimeters, so 16 millimeters in there. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the back. Alrighty, so here's the back. Um, pretty straightforward overall. This has this like beautiful cutout. Um, just looks really nice in the back, so it's all one piece into the neck there. Um, taking a little closer look at this anchor, you'll see that there all the strings kind of stick out of it um, a tiny bit. And I did give the F a tiny bit more room just to try to bring the, um, the lump closer to the saddle. Um, but the rest of these are all sticking out just a little bit. And they're all held in by these tiny little anchor screws. And um, and then the actual piece itself is held on by these by these screws, the anchor piece, um, this big brass piece. Um, 
But the rest of it, it's a very, very simple mechanism. It works really, really well. Um, so yeah, and then this is a Schaller strap lock that I installed afterwards. It was pretty easy. Uh, and <sighs> let's take a look at the inside. So opening this guy up is really easy. You'll notice there are no uh, screws anywhere on the top. So it's just the magnets, actually. So I'm just going to press into this, and that opens up. I do have to press pretty firm. Um, those magnets are super strong. Um, but yeah, you'll notice that on mine, there's that little thing right there. It's kind of kind of see-through. Um, I actually routed that out myself, and that's specifically to make sure that another another piece can actually fit in the base. Um, so let's take a look at that. So that's actually this right here. That's the Veritone. That's the thing with the big red knob on the front. Um, and it comes up so high, actually, that I had to take off the tiniest bit of silicone because it is, it's basically the height of the cavity. Like, it is very, very, barely less than the height of the actual cavity itself. Um, so it barely, barely fits. But it does fit. We do have it in there. Um, and then we also have the orange drop cap for the tone knob, so that's really cool. We like that. Um, here's some tool, a little tool cavity. Um, I installed a little ribbon just to make it easier to pull them out. Um, but those guys are held in there, again, with magnets just to make it a lot more, a little more uh, safe and keeps them from vibrating, too. Um, and then this is a battery cover. Comes off, again, with magnets. Super easy. Um, and also the ribbon is, is in here mostly for the battery, actually, to make it easy to pull the battery out. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much... All that's going on in there, that's the headphone The headphone amplifier. It's the only part of it that's active. The rest of it is passive. So this goes just for the headphone amplifier. It's not for the actual pickups themselves. Um, so the Veritone doesn't need a pickup, doesn't need a battery. Doesn't The tone doesn't need a battery. Volume's fine. Um, it's just for the headphone amp, which is all in here. Um, and then all of that goes to the output. So, yeah, nice and easy. Nothing too big of a deal, and we'll just sort of snap that back in there. We can even just sort of like scooch it, and it'll end up right where it needs to go. Um, same thing with this one. We can basically just sort of pop it in there, and there it goes. Oh, here's my little little piece of ribbon. Ah, oh no! Oh no! Ribbon emergency. All right, there we go. Cool. So that is a general look through a lot of the bass. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so let's hear what it kind of sounds like. Um, <clears throat> let's just every string open. Oh, hold on. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the actual pickups. The tone is all the way off, or all the way on, I guess. It's like all the way at 10. Um, That's it at, on E. I have a, it can go to D. Um, it's a little more floppy, a little weird in D, so I don't normally play it down there. But it's got a really good, clear sound on pretty much all the strings. spread nice chords or the major ones 
Sounds really nice. It's got good sound to it. Let's turn the let's take the tone all the way off and sort of see what that sounds like. kind of really goes away, makes it a little bit more like a little warm, a little easier. kind of stuff sounds great it's really nice I like the I like the chords on it a lot though it's really nice sound really good tone that tone off sounds great um, and then we can roll through the veritone stuff and kind of get a good idea um, of what stuff sounds like so with the tone off there's not a lot of harmonics there turn the tone back up we get a little bit a few more of them we can kind of get them all in there really nice and pretty get the, some of the higher ones Let's move the baritone over and we can get a couple other sounds. Kind of has that like almost like that jazz bass. One more. 
more. Sounds like a mid scoop kind of thing. settings on the baritone so I'm going to turn the tone knob all the way off now and go back through all the baritone settings so that way we can sort of hear them all. Not so bad. original all right so that's sort of a, a test through all of these uh, each of these little little uh, uh, pots making sure we're all the way up on volume you have on on tone off tone and then all six settings for the baritone um, I could show you what uh, what the headphone amp kind of sounds like and what it does um, I can run this into my into my little um, into my little rig but in short, it just powers your headphone and, and makes it really easy to be able to, just to practice by yourself right here or just be able to hear your bass when you're on stage. So it's like having like your own monitor. Um, and that's really, really handy. I was also thinking of running the stage mix actually through this auxiliary port while on stage so that maybe I could have my entire monitor situation on my bass and I can control my own volume for, for that um, and like sort of the mix in there. Um, so that's... Some, that's one of the options um, I've been thinking about doing uh, for this thing. But yeah, it sounds great. It's been doing really good for me for the last couple days. Um, I have noticed the neck is very, very, very thin, which I like, I like that a lot. I thought I would like it more. Um, but I think what I actually want is like a little bit... I want it to be a little wider, I think, to be able to get over to the lower strings more comfortably. Um, I almost feel like I, it would be nice to have like almost like a, something to push on, like on the upside to be able to get over here more easily, you know? Um, and I keep my hand pretty flat, but it would just maybe be nice to have like something out on my thumb, but I don't know. I don't know yet. I, I think so far I just have to get used to playing it, keeping my fingers more round. Um, making my fingers really flat is sort of making some, like a small amount of tendon, tendon soreness. So I really have to keep working on making sure I play with really round fingers on these lower strings especially. Um, and then I also have to really make sure that I'm kind of playing with like a round thumb. Um, normally I play like this, um, and I kind of put my thumb like that on the back. Um, but what I've noticed is that if I round out my thumb, it actually makes all my fingers just a little bit stronger um, and makes them be able to stay arched a little bit further. Whereas when I keep it flat, I also really want to flatten out my fingers over here. So keeping everything nice and arch seems to make it a little stronger for me um, and take away a little bit of that tendon pain, but it's a little bit hard getting used to because I don't, I don't normally grab it like this, you know, it's, it's normally kind of like this. Um, so yeah, just sort of changing up a couple things for this thing. And that's pretty much everything that I can think of to talk about for this bass. So, you know, if you like it. Leave a comment.
comment, I guess. Um, if there's a song that you would like to see done on this little tiny bass, then feel free to leave a comment. Um, or uh, if you would like to, um, if you would like to enter the pedal giveaway, there's a free pedal giveaway. Um, then go ahead and subscribe on YouTube. Go to my Instagram and like the bug post. Um, there's a little grasshopper guy, and that's the uh, that's the guitar pedal giveaway slash bass pedal giveaway. Um, why don't I? Why don't I? Why don't I give you guys? Do you want? Wait, hey. Do you want a sneak peek? Dude, I can. I can show you some of the pedals. Let's go take a look. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right, all right, all right. So, here's a Morley pedal. It's a volume pedal. Um, love this thing. Used, it was on my my very first volume pedal. You can set the minimum volume right here, which I thought was always really cool. Um, chromatic tuner, standard Behringer. Um, I like this guy. It's pretty handy. It's got a couple buttons that are kind of nice. Um, just tells you whether or not it's a stream or the scent, which is really handy. Um, and then the mode for like chromatic or if it's like flat or guitar or whatever. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, the chorus pedal, I like that it has two outputs um, and it has sort of several options up here. It's honestly one of the more like versatile chorus pedals I've ever had. Um, Pretty decent distortion. It's got a lot of options. You can go from like sort of subtle to like really intense. Um, again, just another like nice cheap pedal. Um, we have this, uh, sorry, this deadbeat thank you pedal, um, distortion and sustain. I do really like this pedal. It's really intense. Um, and it has sort of the same build quality as these three because they're all by deadbeat. Um, and these are some of my favorite pedals, actually. This is one of my favorite delay pedals, one of my favorite chorus pedals, and one of my favorite reverb pedals for bass. Um, especially this reverb pedal. It's just really nice, big and thick. Um, yeah, really love this, this pedal. Um, here's the chorus pedal. It's a little less versatile than this one, but it sounds nicer. So, you know. Um, there's this delay. Again, less versatile than this delay, but sounds really nice. It has good sound quality. Um... Here's a distortion. It's a shark. I like this because it sounds like a triangle wave. It's really, really sharp. It's really, really grabs on. Really, you know. Um, here's a double fuzz. I like this guy. It actually replaced my um, deluxe big muff um, just for the road and stuff. Uh, this little frenzy. Now, I like this. This is a germanium, germanium fuzz pedal, right? Germanium fuzz pedal. Really nice. Here's the thing. It has like an attack gate. So you play, and it starts out quiet, and then gets a tiny bit loud. Um, like, it almost goes like, like you're going, do, right? Um, which is just not super ideal, especially especially not on, like, on stage. So here's another germanium fuzz. Um, this one goes from pretty subtle to, like, really intense. Um, but it's germanium fuzz, so it's like, it sounds really nice. It's a good, decent quality sound. Um, here's the SYB4. Five is that what it says? Yeah, the SYB five. I like this pedal. It just it's a little too um like choppy for me. I want I want a look. So you've got sawtooth square wave. Um, these I can't remember what this is called again, but these little guys. Um, or this like W shape. Um, none of those have really a smooth like sine wave sound. Um, like that really like like 808 kind of sound, so, um, but it has pretty much every other synth sound that you could ask for, and you can get the wop wop, you know, you can get that sort of sound going. Speaking of wop wops, the MXR envelope filter is also here, it'll give you some wop wops. Um, this little deluxe octave pedal, the tender, the tender octaver, um, these guys got sued, actually, by, um, the guys that made the POG, the POG, um, because it uses the same circuitry as their smaller POG, as their mini POG, um, except for it has these little, these little tight and thick, um, options in here. So I actually really like this pedal. The thing about it is it needs its own independent power supply. If it shares ground with anybody else, it'll make the whole system go whiny. Um, so that's not great. Um, but you know, you buy a cheap pedal, you get some cheap stuff. Um, Here's a volume pedal, and it sort of like it compacts. You'll notice that it's buddy right here. The expression pedal is already all compacted. Um, and this, this is an expression pedal, I think, that actually goes through, which is really cool. I've never seen that before. Um, 
and yeah, and then this is his little volume pedal buddy. The thing is, these are both these pedals are kind of they do have like obviously a sweep, but it's pretty like on and off. You know, it's not a huge sweep. Um, it's kind of hard to control. Um, I pretty much just treat them as like off and on, and then if I can, maybe like there's sort of a halfway point. Um, but yeah, that's about it for that. And then the Jam Man Solo XT. This is basically a loop pedal. It's got multiple outs. It's got SD card in. It's got USB out. You can record into your computer. You can store stuff. It's got like rhythm parts. It's got looping stuff. You can loop all sorts of stuff. Use the card memory. Use onboard memory. It has auxiliary in. It has two inputs plus a foot switch control so you can control your loops better and everything goes on and off. This thing is crazy. This thing is like actually crazy. Um, but I've never really learned how to use it. So um, that is kind of a whole thing. And then last but not least, the dead bat. So this is basically just um, what it does is it, it makes you it makes you be able to um, simulate a dying battery. Um, so that's pretty cool for some pedals that do weird things like this this synth pedal actually will do some crazy things um, when the dead battery is is on you know sort of the midway point somewhere up here. Um, it just re it like, it freaks out in really weird ways. In fact, all of these pedals, um, become totally different pedals once you put a dead battery on it and kind of just play around with it a little bit. The one thing I would say is that some pedals can't handle having, like, un unusual power, so just, you know, be careful of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's everything. All right, thank you for sticking around. Um, this has been the video about my brand new Moob, my new Moob bass, my Maurizio Uber bass bass. That's super special, the super low octave strings. As far as I'm aware right now, this is the world's smallest short scale bass um, that still goes to a low E. So right now I think I'm holding a world record. Um, so that's kind of cool. It'll be that way until another one gets made. Uh, so who's going to be second, huh? <laughs> um, hope you guys have a good day. And thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, do all the things, share it. It really actually does help. Thank you. Bye.